Okay, guys, we're going to talk about how to make the Word of God come alive in your life. This is going to be a little Bible study training you probably ain't never heard of before. It's going to be something a little bit different. It's got a little bit of that Travis flavor to it, and I think this is going to help you. In fact, I know it will. It is what has helped me to get the most out of God's Word and use it, apply it. It actually has changed my life from the inside out, and I want you to have that as well. So if you've struggled to learn how to get in the Word, and, and maybe the, the Word feels boring to you, or it's like a struggle and a pain point, and, oh, do I have to? What do I have? Hang out with me. We're going to show you a couple things. But if you're new to the channel, my name is Travis Peters. This is The Increase Life. We teach Christians how to live a life of increase and purpose, where each day is better than the last. We want to help you win. We want to help you crush it and be a successful Christian, not somebody who just coasts through life. If you're tired of average, you feel like you should be further along than you are by now, you are in the right spot. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel because I got trainings and videos and lessons coming out like this all the time. They're going to help you win and be successful. If you want to live an average life, never doing anything great for God, and you just want to coast until you die, this is probably not the channel for you. But if you want to learn how to be successful, how to apply God's word in every situation, how to get after it and run your race as one who wins, then you're in the right spot. We got all kinds of coaching programs to help you do this. We have the Increase Warrior Coaching Program. Links in the description to check it out. You'll get a coach. We have a framework. We'll keep you in the rails. We'll get a kingdom community to do this life with. And we're going to help you. All right. That's my pitch. Coming back here to the word. Now, I want to show you what I do. There are a couple different things that I think are going to help make the Word come alive to you. And some of them seem silly, but I think they're actually very, very impactful. Now, here's one of the ones I want to start with that seems silly to some. When we read the Word, I read it like when I read it out loud, I read it like it's in my head. Here's what I mean. I randomly opened, this is my Dake Study Bible. You should have seen my other YouTube video where I dive into this study Bible, why I like it so much. And I just opened it for this video and it landed on a scripture I had highlighted. And I thought, hey, that's a good one. I haven't studied this one for a while. Let's talk about it on the show. So it lands here and it's Psalms 55, 22. And it says, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it how most people read the Bible. Cast your burden on the Lord, he shall sustain you, and he shall never permit the righteous to be moved. But you, God, are so strong. Okay, but I will trust in you. Psalm 56, prayer the chief musician, the song of Marshall for me, O God, O man, swallow me up, all your days are pressing me. Well, hold on. That's not what this is supposed to do or be or... No, no. This is the living word of God. This is God breathed, God inspired. This is, I do believe, some people think this is corny. I believe this is a field guide to a successful life. And the way I look at life is we are citizens from heaven. We have been deployed down to earth in God's army on a mission. Just for illustration's sake, I always say I've got a hundred year window. I've got from 1984 to 2084 to crush it for God to do my assignments, to get after, run my race as one who wins, to advance the kingdom. Well, he gave us this field guide while we're down here in this foreign land, this field guide on how to be successful. If you follow the handbook, follow the step-by-step -step instructions, you're going to crush it. So that's why I read the word. When I read the word, I'm getting the power out of it so that I can go live a successful life for him. I don't read this to, you know, try to impress him. So he looks down and is like, Travis spent 30 minutes in the Word today. Well done. Extra blessings coming your way. No, no, no. This is not performance-based like that. That's not how it works. He doesn't withhold a blessing because you didn't get in the Word. But if you didn't get in the Word, perhaps you missed the power it had for you. Perhaps you missed the instruction. That's why I think everybody needs to be at church every time the doors are open. You might have all these weird misconceptions, but let's just make it super simple. You might have missed your instructions. And the Holy Spirit was in that place and he was he was speaking. Maybe it wasn't even what the pastor said, but it was the message behind the message. And the Holy Spirit was able to get that to you because you were in that environment. When I'm in the Word, I'm in that environment. I'm entering into his presence. Draw near to him. He draws near to you. 
Man, I could hear more clearly. My eyes are being opened. Revelation knowledge is coming to me. Oh, that makes this word come alive. So when I read the word, back to what I was going to say is, we often read it monotone, or we heard it read to us in a monotone voice. And as simple or silly as it sounds, that might be one of the reasons it's not coming alive to you like it does to others. So here's how I read it, and I'm being genuine. This is not inauthentic. This is authentically Trav. I'm the same on this show thing, this podcast, as YouTube, as I am in real life. This is just me. So when I read the word, I read it like this. Psalms 55, 22. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain you. So I stop and I think. I just read two sentences, two lines. Cast your burden. And I think, well, what's my burden right now? See, just this little exercise, most people don't even do that. Well, what's my burden? Cast your burden on the Lord. Well, we've got a decision to make. Uh, something happened at one of my girls' schools. They're no longer going to offer the upper grades. So we thought we had about two more years before we needed to switch schools. Well, it looks like we have to switch schools next year. And feel a little bit of pressure. And we gotta we got to select the right ones. we got to get applications in. These are, these are private Christian schools. So there's an application process. And there might not be openings and stuff to think through. Well, we need to schedule some tours and go check them out. So I guess I'm kind of feeling burdened about that. Oh, I should... I should cast that onto the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Well, I'm righteous. You're righteous. That's us. We qualify. It just means we're in right standing with him. If we've asked Jesus into our heart, we're in right standing with him. All right, cool. He won't permit the righteous to be moved. I would say that moved, as I'm looking at it here, trying to figure out what it means, so to speak, is I'm not shaken. So this burden feeling of having to pick new schools all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it could shake you. It could rock you. It could get you unnerved, unsettled, stressed, overwhelmed, anxious, worried, all those things. That's being moved. And maybe even moved off what you believe. Well, God said in Philippians 4.19 that he will meet all of my needs, according to his riches and glory. I'm not going to be moved from that. I believe that. The righteous will not be moved. He won't permit it. So I'm going to cast, but I, you got to do the first part, right? Cast your burden on the Lord. You do that one thing. He does two things. He shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. So I got a couple things that come up to me right now. What does cast mean? I want to make sure I know. I think I know. And then he shall sustain you. What does sustain mean? I think I know, but I really want to know. I want to know what that word actually means in its original form. And we can do that. Go back to my other video. I showed you a couple tools, how to study God's word. Well, we'll dive into that again real quick here in a second. The next thing I want you to look at is in a great study Bible, like the Dake study Bible. There's other ones out there. You look down, and almost every scripture has a supplemental footnote to go with it. Cast your burden on the Lord. He shall sustain you. Okay. I go down here, and it says, A man is commanded to do one thing. Cast your burden on the Lord. And then God promises to do two things. He shall sustain you, and never permit the righteous to be moved. Christians are in the habit of magnifying the promises and ignoring the terms of their fulfillment. Then, when the promises are not fulfilled, they murmur and complain. Well, this didn't work. I feel like he didn't sustain me. I feel like he didn't hold me up. I feel like he didn't come through. And he said the righteous will not be moved. Well, I've been shaken. I've lost sleep over this. I've been losing sleep over money. I've been fighting with the spouse. So God didn't do what he said he was going to do. No, you didn't do what you were supposed to do. you got to cast your burden. If you cast your burden onto him, he's got you. If you hold on to your burden, he's trying to help. But you won't let it go to him. And I'm studying this stuff out. It also, one of my favorite things about this Bible is it references a bunch of other scriptures. So this one says, go look at 1 Peter 5, 7, and 8. 
And if you guys have been on this channel before, you know that that's one of my favorites. But I'm going to pull it up over here. Actually, no, I'm going to pull it up st still here in this Bible. I really like that scripture in the Amplified Classic. I'll let you look it up. But that scripture, it, it's, it's one of my cornerstone Travis Peters to success, keys to success scriptures. It's 1 Peter 5, 7, specifically in the Amplified. So let's look it up here. So that Psalms 55, 22 connects to this. We've got an Old Testament connecting to a New Testament. That's one of my favorite things. Promised in both. It's powerful. Cast all your care upon him, capital H, to God. Cast all your care upon God, for he cares for you. So let's, let's go reread that with some emphasis. Casting all of your care upon him. Well, that's just what it said in Psalms 55. For he cares for you. Okay. Let's see if there's any footnotes on this one. Looking here. All right. Not really seeing. Not really seeing anything here. All right. Cool. So let's go back. So we got two scriptures. Now let's go back to Psalms 55, 22. I'm going to hop over to my computer screen. And we're going to pull some scripture. I'm going to show you how to look this up and go a little bit deeper. Now, the next thing I want you to do after we go deeper, when we're talking about making the word come alive, the first thing you have to know is it's actually up to you. See, what happens is we think, I don't know why God is having, having me in this dry place, this dry season with him right now. Maybe he's trying to get something to me or teach me something. No. Mm -mm. You draw near to him. He draws near to you. Mark 4.24 in the Amplified Classic says, The measure and thought and study that you give to his word is the measure and thought and study that will be given back to you and more on top of that. So when you dive in looking for revelation, you will get it and you'll get even more than you asked for. It's one of those principles. You sow a little, you reap a little. You sow a lot, you reap a lot. The measure and thought and study you use is the measure and thought and study will come back to you. So we got to stir this up ourselves. And let, let's do this. Let's hop over. And we're going to look at Psalms 55, 22. Here's the first thing I do. I usually use Bible Gateway. It's on my iPad right now. I do it on my desktop a lot as well. Psalms 55, 22. Scroll down to it. Here we go. Cast your burden on the Lord. Oh, I'm in the Amplified Classic here. Let's just do this. Let me show you how I do it. I hit compare. I highlight the scripture, hit compare. And see, I can pull it up in all of these different translations. This is how I study it. This is how it comes alive to me. This is how you get revelation of it. This is how it becomes alive, not only alive, but real. I mean, the word of God says in Hebrews, it says the word of God is living, sharper than a two-edged sword. It's alive. Cast your burden on the Lord, releasing the weight of it. Woo! and he will sustain you. He will never allow the consistently righteous to be moved, made to slip, fall, or fail. And then it references 1 Peter 5, 7 again, which means you should go look that up. That's creating the solid foundation of a promise. So you guys see in this promise, right? Cast your burden on the Lord, he will sustain you. This is what you want. Cast your burden on the Lord, release the weight of it to him, and he will sustain you. Let's look at the Passion Translation. Here's what I've learned through it all. Leave all your cares and anxieties at the feet of the Lord, and measureless grace will strengthen you. So you have to check yourself for a minute. All right, God, I've got a lot of anxiety. And I know it's trendy right now to get, oh, my anxiety this, my anxiety. Hey, it is not trendy for Christians to have anxiety. There are too many scriptures that say, do not have anxiety. I've already made a video on this. Go check it out. But I list them. There's a whole bunch that say, do not be anxious for anything. Cast all of your anxieties onto him. If you're holding on to anxiety, that's on you. That's not a God thing. That's a huge holding on to it. You and your, it's, it's, it's unscriptural thinking, a little bit of pride. And you're thinking, Trap, that's insensitive. Yep. I'm not, yes. I'm trying to be your friend. Please. It is not trendy to be sick and anxious. Okay. Give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. Message translation, pile your troubles on God's shoulders. He'll carry your load. He'll help you out. Woo. Remember there's another scripture where Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. If your yoke does not feel easy, if your burden feels heavy, 
You don't have Jesus's on you. Grab it. God, I release the weight of this burden to you. I cast my cares to you. The school thing, this money thing, this job thing, this business thing, this employee thing, this health thing, I release the weight of it to you, Father. You carry this for me because you will sustain me. Your word says, if I pile my troubles on your shoulders, you'll carry my load. You'll help me out. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to pile this onto your shoulders, Lord. He'll never let good people topple into ruin. And it's good. Amplified. Cast your burden on the Lord. Release it. And he will sustain you and uphold you. Maybe you haven't released it. I like that first one. Release the weight of it to him. Common English Bible, cast your burden on the Lord. He will support you. God will never let the righteous be shaken. There's that word, shaken. So the next thing I want to do is, we already did it, but I would go look up that First Peter 5, 7 because it tagged it. So I'm going to go check that out to help with my understanding. I want to understand these promises. That's the second part. Is first, I like to read with emphasis. I think it actually matters more than you would think. Two, I see these as commands or promises. Cast your burdens on the Lord. Listen to how that's written. It just gives you a command. Cast your burden on the Lord. Hey, you should prayerfully consider casting your burden upon the Lord. Maybe just think about that. That'd be something to look at doing. Doesn't say that. It just says, cast. And it's implied you. You cast your burden on the Lord. Travis, cast your burden on the Lord. Release the weight of it to him. Pile your, tr your troubles onto his shoulders. He'll take care of it. Okay, I'm going to release the weight. Let's go. So now I'm applying. I'm stopping and I'm thinking about what it's saying and I'm applying it. I'm going to go do it. A lot of us just read it. But look how long, look how much time we've spent on just three lines. It's kind of, it's basically two sentences. Look how much time we've spent on this. This is making the word come alive to me. Now, we're going to go over here, back to our computer, and let's look at the, let's go to Blue Letter Bible and look at, in the concordance. Again, I show you how to do this in uh, the, the video I made about how to study your Bible. So let's go over to Psalms. We go to Psalms 55, and I, I don't think I've done this exact study before, so I don't really know what we're about to find. We're going to see if there's more information for us to dig up on this scripture promise. So, like, I don't know about you, but I don't want to carry these burdens anymore. I don't want to carry the weight of them. I don't want to lose sleep. I don't want to have anxiety and worry. This does not honor God. It doesn't feel like a God kind of life. It feels like I'm getting defeated and getting my butt kicked. So let's get this off of us, shall we? So I'm going to study this. I'll put the time in to get this junk off me. All right, here we go. Psalms 55, 22, we see it here. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. So I click that. I basically just click that scripture, and it pulls this up. It's a bunch of study options. This very top one, interlinear and concordance. I'm going to click that, and I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to look for these words. Do you see over there here in the English where it says cast, and the next to it, strongs? So you can see the original Greek or Hebrew word, and we can dive into the definition. So let's look at the word cast, because it says I need to cast my burdens. So let's just figure out what cast means. And again, I think I know I can kind of put two and two together. But if I can dive in and get to the actual definitions, it's just going to help. So I click that, and the transliteration, it'll show you how to say it, which is kind of fun if you want to know that. Let's scroll down here. Here's the outline of biblical usage. To throw, cast, hurl, or fling. Cast off, shed. I like that. I'm going to shed these burdens. To be thrown, to be cast, to be cast out, or forth. Okay. You can see all the different times that word's been used. 77 times it was translated the word cast. 15 times cast out, cast away, etc. And then you can go here. I like, I like this part where it says uh, Strong's H7993, tap to view the entire entry. So here's a bunch of different ways it's used in a bunch of different scriptures. Usually a human subject, throw or cast. Remember we said you are implied. 
And you can come down here. See if anything stands out. And so it kind of just creates a whole bunch of scriptures with this particular one. This is awesome. So, so far, what I'm gathering is it means to cast. Cast it out, cast it away, cast it off. Let's go back to this list. Oh, I'm going to go back here one more time. And... I wanted to see this right here. So it's kind of cool that like, scanned, they scanned the original documents that the stuff comes from. To cast or to throw, to cast away, to cast about. Figurative uses. Literal uses. So here's one little thing in Ezekiel that, see there's that number seven, I can't really highlight anything here, I don't think. Same phrase in Arabic, to cast anything upon God, to commit it to his care. All right, I like that. I want to commit it to his care. So that's kind of the process. So there wasn't a ton to find from that word, but we can continue and do that with the other words. Cast upon the Lord thy burden, and he shall sustain thee. There's that word sustain. I want to see what that kind of means, too. To seize, contain, measure. To measure, to calculate. Sustain, maintain, contain. To sustain, support, and nourish. To contain, hold, and restrain, support, endure. To be supplied. To contain, hold, all right, endure. To abide, bear, comprehend, contain, feed. Guide, hold, nourish, make provision for. Okay, that's good. He'll make provision for you if you cast your burdens upon him. Let's dive in a little bit deeper. Like I said, I've never done this particular study on the scripture. Don't know what we we're going to find. Thought we'd just do it together. Some of these things got more stuff we can dive deeper into. Some of it, not always. Sometimes it means exactly what you think it means. So that's how I do this. And by kind of following this and learning topically, it's typically what I do to make this word come alive. I dive into it. I want to get an understanding. And then I begin to speak it. I keep it in front of me. And I say, God, I'm going to cast my burdens onto you. I'm going to release the weight of it to you. And this word starts to come alive. Let me look up the footnotes. Let me go to the, the scriptures that it tags and recommends to go read next. Okay, let's go back over to 1 Peter 5, 7. Let's go check this thing out. All right, cool. Now let's pull that one up in a bunch of different translations. Like, let's look at that real quick. Let me just read that to you in the Amplified Classic. These are instructions. These are commands. Cast the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on him, for he cares about you affectionately and he cares about you watchfully. I used to say that scripture multiple times per day, specifically in regards to finances. I remember there was a season when money was tight and I had that printed off and I said, God, I thank you. I cast my cares and worries, anxieties and cares, concerns over to you about money right now. You promised to meet all my needs, to sustain me, to provide for me. I cast that to you so you can do what you do. It says you will care for me affectionately. You will care for me watchfully. I'm going to cast that to you. And when I would do that, sometimes I'd have to do it two, three, four, seven times, but I'd get that peace. I'd get that release. I'd get that, oh, that feels so good. Thank you, Lord, for your word. That your word always proves true. This is how you activate it. This is how you make it come alive. What do you need to improve on in your life right now? There's a scripture for that. There's multiple scriptures for that. Let's get those scriptures. Let's get the footnotes going. All right, what, what do we got here? What, what, what can we learn from this? I thought it was interesting how it says, man's commanded to do one thing, God will do two. Never is there a promise without a condition. A lot of times, Christians just focus on the benefit without the condition. So like Proverbs 28, it's the one where it talks about all the different things about your blessed coming in, blessed going out, God's blessings come upon you and overtake you, and all this stuff. But the very first scripture there says, if you obey the voice of the Lord, you'll get these things. You'll live that blessed life. Well, a lot of us 
I, I missed that part. And then they're wondering why God's not blessing us or God's not this, God's not that. Well, yeah, yeah. You didn't start the business I told you to start. You didn't start the ministry. You didn't sow that financial seed. As soon as you do that, the, the rest can happen. And it's not a performance-based thing. It's just a promise with a condition. These are the principles and how they work. If you do this, you will get that. Cast your cares upon him. He will care for you. He'll sustain you. He'll provide for you. But you stay up late worrying, holding on to your cares, holding on to your worries. He's like, ah, I'm trying to work in your finances, but you won't let me. You're holding on too tight. Release the weight of it to me. Ah, man, I hope this helps you. This is how I do it. This is the pattern. This makes it exciting to get up in the morning and spend time with the word. Not to impress God or show off or check a box, but because the more I do this, I know this is going to sound weird to some of you, the more powerful I become because it's God's power at work within me. Ephesians 3.20, Philippians 2 talks about this stuff. It's his power working in you. Let's go charge that thing. Let's go fire that thing up. Let's go fan the flame, stir up the gift. Let's get in here. The measure of thought and study you put into this determines how much you'll get out of it. And he'll give you the revelation. You ask questions, he'll give you answers. He'll show you scriptures. He'll show you what to do. He will lead you. He will guide you. This is how you make the word come alive. Oh, man. I might, I might need to do a whole... You guys have heard me talk about this, but, but this is currently firing me up the most. God's Plan for Man by Finn Estate. Same guy who did the Bible, who did his footnotes to the Bible. Man, if, if I just open this thing, it falls on a page, and it fires me up. Like I'll just find like one sentence in here, and it'll send me on a two-hour journey going through scriptures and translations and stories and footnotes and all these different things. The Word's coming alive because it's powerful, but you have to see it as powerful. Otherwise, it's just words on a page. I love you guys. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. I got tons more videos like this coming out. I love to help you win. See you in the next one.